Hey everybody, Glitch and Volker here. We are going to talk about another strategy that we came upon on the internet and implement the strategy in WealthLab and see how it's doing. So Volker, do you want to describe which one we're going to talk about this time? Yeah, well, it's, it's called the Turnaround Tuesday and that's an interesting approach. It basically says, um, you know, on, buy on the Monday's close. The basic strategy is buy on the Monday's close and sell on the um, Tuesday close. So that's that's the turnaround Tuesday. So you you basically have to catch the closing price, and and then there's tons of variations about this strategy. And you know, I'm, uh, to be quite honest, Ian, you implemented a couple. I think one was using a moving average, a 50-day moving average. Well, so let's the take price look, has to be. Well, let's yeah. take a look at the source here. So this is the article you sent to me by our friend Adrian Reed in his blog post, Turnaround Tuesday, How to Profit from This Weekly Market Anomaly. Yeah, and um, yeah, this is an uh, Adrian actually came. Well, I'm not sure whether he came up with it, but uh, he describes it pretty good here. He came up with variations himself, and once I saw it actually on Adrian's site, I was researching it obviously, and it's 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 interesting. As I said, there's plenty of strategies around um, uh, playing around with this one, and it's it's quite interesting. All right. So, so the first, um, he's got three versions here. Number one, number two, and number three. So number one, the basic rules are pretty simple: buy spy on the close of trading on Monday if the close is lower than the open. So you have to actually look ahead one bar at the closing price of SPY. If the closing price of that Monday is lower than the opening price of the Monday, then you buy it at the close. And then you exit at the close of Tuesday. So that's version one. Should we take a look at how I implemented that in WealthLab? Yeah, yeah, let's take a look. Okay, so the way I did it here is I created a code base strategy, and in the constructor of the strategy is where you define parameters. So I created a parameter, uh, called it Turnaround Tuesday Strategy Version, and you can select from one to three. So now if we go to our settings here, you can change this parameter to control which version of the strategy you want to run. And we have it running on SPY. We have it running on 100% of equity position sizing. And let's quickly take a look at the logic here in the execute method. So first of all, I'm checking the current index. So this execute method gets executed for every bar of data in the history that you're testing. And this IDX variable is the index into that data. So the index will be zero for the first bar. And then it'll be, if, if there's a thousand bars of data, for example, the last index will be 999. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying if the index is equal to the count of bars minus one, then I'm returning. We're not processing the last bar of data because we have to actually look ahead to the next bar to this strategy is like peeking into the future one bar to look at the closing price and its relationship to the open of the the following bar uh, therefore this strategy will never be able to generate signals so you can only generate signals if you're not looking ahead to the next bar because you can never know what's happening in the future so just want to get that out of the way so this will not be generating generating any signals. So we are looking at our parameter that the user selected, one, two, or three. And then we're using this. First of all, we're using this if statement. So if the next following bar, so this this is IDX plus one. So we're looking at the next bar if it if the day of the week is a Monday. So then we're only going to be you know, entering at the close on Mondays with this strategy. So we're doing this as our first check. So then next we 
go into a switch statement, which goes to either one, two, or three, depending on the parameter value we selected. So, so for per, so for value one, we're saying is the closing price of that Monday less than the open price? And if it is, then we enter the trade at market close. So it's going to buy on the close of Monday if the close is less than the open, which is the rule that he indicated right here. Uh, yeah, it looks good. Um, it's exactly, um, this is, um, I think, pretty much the basic rule of the turnaround Tuesday. Okay, so he's back testing from, looks like 19, maybe 1993 or something uh, forward. Look, he's using AMI Broker in his article. We'll have a talk with them and see if we can convince him to publish a wealth lab version of this. That would be interesting to get out there. I'll, I know you'll convince him, Volker. So let's uh, let's see if we can do that, you know, afterward here. But for now, we will go ahead and uh, run this on SPY, this first version. See if we get results similar to to what Adrian got there. So let's look at our equity curve. Let's turn off the benchmark because it's very clear that this approach did not beat the benchmark. So let's let's just look at the equity curve on its own. We can look at the shape of it and see that the shape of it is actually really close to what uh, he has here, including this kind of vertical, you know, kind of jump right here. Uh, we are getting, you know, up to the 360,000 range here, whereas uh, he's getting like around 375. So there's a, a slight difference, maybe. He's including dividends, uh, you know, I'm not sure, but the result we're getting is a little bit lower than what we're seeing in uh, Adrian's article, but it's pretty similar. I think, I think there's a couple of things that we, that, that might happen here is, uh, because I see that you only, you buy on Mondays. So maybe if Monday is not the, the first day, it's a Tuesday. Then well, maybe I'm, he I'm, going by, the... I'm going by explicitly what is said here. So, ah, okay. You know, it says yeah. buy on the close on Monday. You know, he doesn't say mm -hmm. the first trading day the first of the day. week. I mean, it's a turnaround yeah, Tuesday. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm taking it literally. Yeah, which is good, you know, but I'm, you know, I, that was the one thing that I could think of. Um, and um, what was the other one? Hmm. Well, you mentioned already something like dividends and yeah. So well, so that's, I, I mean, I think the curve looks very similar, very similar. And yep, it looks I similar. Uh, I mean, if we look at the benchmark, it's I mean, it's not you know doing much uh, for beating buy and hold. Although I mean, you know, the drawdown is you know a little bit lower. Let's take a look at the second version. So the second version, TT, turnaround Tuesday, number two. Buy the SPY on the close of Monday. If the close on Monday is lower than the close of the previous Friday, and the close on the previous Friday is lower than the close on the previous Thursday. So then the exit is the same. So then we get this, uh, the results, including an allowance for commissions. So, so he's now factoring in commissions. Uh, in this test uh, are positive but still not exciting so let's run our version 2 here switch this to 2 click run so yeah we've we've uh, have a similar curve we're not factoring in commissions here so we are resulting in a you know a higher profit with this with our version two of about 240. Uh, looks a little bit less volatile. Uh, so yeah, that's his version two. Let's look at version three. And his version three is buy spy on the close of Monday if the close is lower than the close of the previous Friday and the previous Friday's close is lower than the previous Thursday's, and the close of Monday is less than the previous bar's 50-period moving average. 
So that is version 3. We'll switch this to 3 and press Run. And we get this result. So we're still a little, you know, hovering around the same profit level with even less drawdown, it looks like. So, I mean, uh, the equity curve is basically, you know, not experiencing hardly any drawdown, which is interesting. However, if you click benchmark, you know, here you get what would have happened if you would have just bought SPY. So, you know, let's uh, take it for what it is here, right? Well, yeah, I mean, it, 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 but it's a smooth curve, you know, and I would like to see the average annual ret percent return um, because, you know, and, and the drawdown is fantastic. You know, that's, uh, yeah, but yeah, you're, it's only, you're only generating, you know, yeah. not even 3% annual. So, I mean, if you would have just bought SPY, you would have got 8.2%. So, drawdowns. I mean... Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a very conservative approach, you know, just doing it this way. So before I get into like how we might improve it, you know, he concludes his article with his, uh, you know, pitch to uh, to get the turbocharged version of the strategy. Then, then of course, you have to pay for that uh, from Adrian if, if you want to see you know, what is generating this final result of 860,000. Wow. So that's the the carrot that he's dangling in front of you, you know, to, to get people to buy his system. So, I mean, you well, know. Well, if the results, if, if the results are that good, you know, I mean, this is a really move up. Yeah, I I played around with it. I'm sure, I'm sure Dion, you did too, but I never got it around this level. So, well, one thing um, I thought must is be something. One thing I thought is that this has such a low drawdown. Why not trade it instead of using SPY? Why not trade it using what's it, SPXL, triple leverage SPY ETF? So okay. let's, uh, let's run that on SPXL. So there we go. So, you know, we've now, you know, got an 8.2% return just by using a different symbol and what if we go back to like the first version here even and so now it's even beating oh. spy so all by just oh, yeah, changing, changing our tradable signal from spy to spxl but you know then you may think well i mean what if we just put spxl as our benchmark yeah then We'll see if we would have just bought SPXL, then you know we would have done far better, but there would have been, you know, much more volatility. SPXL had a 75% drawdown. So it would be hard to sit through a 75% drawdown. And yeah. uh, the strategy is now at about almost 13% annualized. So just changing the symbol, you know, really did a a good a good uh, you know jolt to to get this thing performing better. Well, one thing that you can try out is because I mean it is very, really limiting um, the number of trades. So the one thing that I took away is the Friday has to be lower than the Thursday. When I took this out, I think this improved already the result. And uh, I had one more rule, which I can't recall now, which I think was actually really giving the, the highest, um, the, the, the best change. Well, Volker, but, maybe um, uh, why don't you send me those two variations and I can add them as like a version four and five for when we publish this in our next update of Wealth Lab. We will put this strategy in this. YouTube strategies folder where we'll put all of our strategies that we're covering. So you can send me those versions and I'll add them and then uh, I'll put them in this YouTube strategies folder for our next Wealth Lab release. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good idea because and I mean this is basically the beauty of Wealth Lab that you can say, hey, I've got an idea. I think I can see, you know, if you analyze the chart. You, you get an idea saying, oh, this is something that sticks out to me. 
uh, what if I ch change this little, I mean, I just do one line code changes or I delete one, one line of a code. And, um, and if you do this, um, or use drag and drop for that matter, then, um, you, you can actually improve results or change it to your liking, you know, like, and Dion came up with, um, using, was it, was it triple, triple spy or? Yeah. Um, spy. Yeah. So, and it, I mean, you've got to see it's a different period to, um, very difficult to beat. I think it starts about 10, 12 years ago, if I saw correctly. Well, well, 2008, in, you know, it's the best time to start. Yeah. Well, um, you know, very good time to start, right? So, um, yeah, but uh, that, that's the beauty. Uh, you can use that one strategy and um, apply it to all three um, average the ETFs, like the, the diamonds, the spy, and the Qs. So that would be something really cool. All it's right. really interesting. Yep, so great. So that's the Turnaround Tuesday, our take on it. And we will, Volker will contact Adrian, and I know you'll be able to convince him to publish an updated blog article featuring, you know, our link to the strategy. So maybe interesting to get that out there. Yep, yep. Show and people this beautiful product. Until then, thanks for watching, everyone, and see you next time. And if uh, anybody has any strategies that they, you know, have found online or anywhere and they want us to implement and analyze for the series, uh, please post it in the comments below. Excellent. Thanks, Doc. Thanks, Dion. Nice right. work. Looks good. Thanks. Take care. Okay. Bye.